What up everyone, it's your man xman 87 here bringing you another G.I. Joe Classified video and what I have for you today is the Hasbro Pulse exclusive G.I. Joe Classified series clutch with vamp vehicle action figure review. Before we get into everything, if you could please drop a like rating on the video, it'll help show your support for my channel and I greatly appreciate it. Now with that said, let's go! Going over the character background first, Lance J. Steinberg was born and raised in Asbury Park, New Jersey. Before entering the military, Clutch worked at Manny's Mean Machines as a mechanic and was heavily involved in street racing. He graduated military academy and advanced infantry training, covert op school, executive bodyguard school, and ranger school. He is a qualified expert with the following weapons, M14, M16, M1911A1, M3A1s and M79 and M60s. Clutch was one of the original members of the G.I. Joe team and holds the rank of Corporal E4. He is the team's vamp, driver, and mechanic. Clutch's code name came from his position as a transportation specialist. He was a top-notch driver and was mostly behind the wheel of the vamp. Clutch was known as a bit of a hothead and a constant wisecracker. He was also kind of a womanizer. He was often seen hitting on women, a practice that sometimes put him at odds with Scarlet and the other female Joes. At one point during training, he even nominates Covergirl and Scarlet to practice mud wrestling. Even though he is portrayed as a jerk, he is a good soldier with a really good heart who has saved the lives of many both on and off duty. Clutch's head sculpt is looking really good here. Now normally this character has a 5 o'clock shadow, but they gave him a full beard, which is something he sported in the Sumbo cartoon, so they took that route. But overall, you know, he still looks good. I don't mind the full beard. And his hair sculpt came out really nice, has that kind of comic-like stringy hairstyle, and it looks good. I like it. For the body book, he's on the Outback body, so you already know what to expect in terms of articulation if you already own that figure. Uh, but the details on him are really good. He has a new layered vest, as you can see. It's a nice sculpt. Uh, he's got the holster right there for his handgun, which we'll take a look at accessories shortly. Just want to cover the details on the figures first. He's got the American flag right there on the sleeve. That looks pretty cool. And because he's on the Outback body, unfortunately, just like the Outback figure, the pins don't match the skin tone all that well. I mean, it was worse on the Outback figure. Here is a little bit better. It's it's not too bad, but I still notice it. And then uh, he's got a little pinup tattoo, and that's nice. You know, he does love the ladies, so that makes sense that he would get a pinup tattoo. And on the left arm, he has these uh, racing flags, and you see like a tire with some flames around it. So yeah, these tattoos definitely speak to his personality. And he's got a thigh strap with the tool kit, because you know, he's a mechanic, so he's got to have a tool kit on him at all times. Painted details on the thighs, the knee pads, and his boots. So, yeah, it's a good looking figure. And for accessories, he's got a cool looking handgun. He does have a port right there, so you could plug in effects. And I do like the handle on here, too. It looks good. Painted in brown. Nice. I like it. And like I pointed out before, you could store the handgun into his holster. Then he's got a monkey wrench, and again, nice painted details on there. And you can add to his toolkit. So you can just put it right there in the slot, and yeah, there you go. Looks really good and complete that way. Also included is this shotgun, and you notice I put the guns on his left hand because he is a lefty. He's got the vertical hinge that goes up and down. The other one is just a traditional horizontal hinge, and yeah, this is a good-looking shotgun. Unfortunately, no storage spot for this. It does come with two helmets, so this is the first one. And unfortunately, it's a little wobbly. It does shift around a lot, even though it fits, because if I try to remove it without putting pressure, it still stays in place. It just shifts around a lot, so that's a problem there. I thought this was the same helmet that came with Grunt, and as you can see, they're different. Still a nice-looking helmet, but my favorite one is this Dragonfly-themed helmet. As you can see, the shark tooth, or shark teeth, I should say, painted on the helmet. That looks so good, man. Uh, the red visor has this glossy tint to it, so that's nice. Oh, this looks good. Originally, I thought it was going to be a swappable head like Grunt, um, but it's not. It just goes over the head, which I'm fine with that because now you could put that on another figure. So let's say I take out my Grunt. This could definitely help with uh, adding more variety to your army building, and this looks really good. 
And this guy has army builder potential because buying multiples of these will give you multiple helmets so you could put it on guys like Grunt. Create your own grounds crew for your vamp. Create your own air crew for your dragonfly. Modify it however you want. And just for fun, I popped on the alternate helmet that came with Grunt on here. And I gotta say, it looks really nice. So this is something I'm digging. And uh, yeah, I just love adding more variety to my G.I. Joe army building. Continuing on with accessories, but this time... It's the accessories for the vamp and, you know, going to go over this so then we can take a look at the vamp with everything on it. We get the shovel and it looks really good and you can store it on the vamp. It goes right here into this groove and you can, well, let me put it the other way, face down. And I want to get that handle right there at the top, point it down and it does clip on nicely. Then you get two jerry cans and it's got some nice decals on it. It says danger and it's labeled one and two right there as you see. It's really nice sculpt. It's got a handle to it as well and it goes on to this rack right here. Then it comes with this red axe that you can store onto this rack. It's got two slots right there. So you could just slide it down for storage. Then you get this tiny fire extinguisher which I think is pretty cool. And there is this clip right there. You can just store it in there and just make sure it has a nice snapping sound and there you go then lastly you get this twin mount for the machine guns that pretty much creates a turret for the vamp and this looks really good however i do have a gripe with the ammo ribbon because it attaches to the ammo cache and you see there's this shelf right here that you can rest it on and it just it's always lopsided it doesn't stay straight it should stay straight but even if I push it against uh, this edge right here, oh man, it just, yeah, it's always going to look lopsided. And that's just, it drives me nuts. <laughs> it really does. But the machine guns are removable. So if you want a G.I. Joe character to hold it, you know, you can do that. There's this peg right here and you just plug this onto it. And then from there, it swivels and you have this hinge where it moves just about that far down it just moves straight and then it only moves about that far up but this is what i'm saying it's always going to look lopsided with these ammo caches and that just oh, it's an eyesore now that we have all the accessories stored onto the vamp vehicle this thing just looks absolutely incredible man i love the way this looks and i remember at san diego comic-con one of the joe team members said that uh they figured out a way to bring these low tier vehicles into the line and man i just feel like low tier is an understatement <laughs> almost an insult because now i know low tier they meant by the price right so this is a hundred dollars but no way shape or form is this low tier in quality because this thing is just as good as the Haslab his tank so i know by low tier they meant price that's just you know not Haslab price but when I tell you this thing is just as good in quality as the his tank, I, I mean it because this thing has some weight to it. It does not feel hollow whatsoever. It's amazing. The sculpt all around is completed. They're, they didn't miss a beat here. I love the army green color they chose here. You get lots of decals. So if I take out my measuring tape out here, it measures about 13 inches across, I want to say, and about, well, with the turret, I want to say about 7 to 8 inches. So let's just go over the sculpt and the details first, because I want to go over that. Then we'll go over the play features, because there's just lots to cover with this. As you can see, the decals, like G.I. Joe, painted right there, the G.I. Joe logo. Uh, you get some directions right there. Uh, oh, man, this is so nice. United States, G.I. Joe logo, you get some uh, warning signs right there like the caution and the jerry cans just fell off. These two pieces right here are removable, but I wouldn't recommend displaying without it because then you get these weird holes. I just want to point that out. And more great details on the front. You can see the grills right here. You can see the D-rings right there. That's pretty cool. They move. I wish this chain wasn't sculpted. I wish it was a real chain link. We get the caution decal right there. Uh, the fog lights have this nice translucent color. They are removable, so uh, if you wish to remove them, if you don't want that look, 
uh, you can remove it and it's also on the top right there at the windshield so here's a look at the fog lights on top of the windshield i really like that translucent blue plastic it looks so good and uh, i don't know if you want to count this as an accessory but it's a handlebar so you know you can have one of the joes gripping it with their hands um you got the steps right there uh some numbers oh, this looks so cool made an a kit right there okay uh that is another cool detail on the other side is tool kit and the directions came out pretty clear. I don't know how it's coming off camera, but I'll read it just in case it's not focusing right. But it says, please keep hands and feet in the vehicle at all times. Vehicles should only be operated by a trained professional. G.I. Joe is not responsible for any injury received while operating this vehicle. <laughs> That's pretty funny. To unlatch, pull on release lever and fold backwards slowly to avoid finger trap. I love little details like that. Uh, machine guns are numbered as well. See, this is what I'm talking about, man, with these uh, ammo caches. But I do want to point out that the turret has this really nice diamond steel uh, grating on it. It's really cool. More details on the back around the turret. Looks good. And on the back right there, you saw it before, you got some lights right there. You got the exhaust pipes right where the fire extinguisher is. You can see more details on it. Yeah, they went all out with the sculpt here. And as you can see, more insane amount of details inside the gauge. You got the radars, the radio signals, all that. But yeah, man, insane amount of details with all those buttons. And you can't probably tell because it's hard to tell, but inside... Yeah, my camera isn't focusing right on it, so I took a picture for you guys so you can see the gas pedal has the G.I. Joe logo on it next to the brake pedal. So that's pretty freaking cool. I like that touch. Then here are the seats in a beige color. No cup holder though, man. I'm, I'm sad about that. And as you can see, the bottom is completely sculpted. So like I said, it's super strong and sturdy. Oh, I forgot to show you this. That's the lid for the gas tank. So that's pretty cool. You can see the suspensions right there, right above the tire. So that looks good. And one of my favorite visuals about the vamp is look at the mirrors. They are reflective. How cool is that, man? That right there. I did not expect this vehicle to have reflective mirrors. That is freaking awesome. And now let's go on to the play features, which is what makes this vehicle so much fun. And the most important thing for me in any vehicle is rolling rubberized tires. And yes, these tires are not plastic. They are indeed rubber, as you can see. My fingers squeezing the tire. So yeah, definitely don't poke a hole in these. Otherwise, you're going to have a real flat. <laughs> and that's not it for the tires. It does have a spring action. So you could push the vehicle down and you can see it spring up and down. Now, man, that's just freaking awesome. I love that. Another play feature I like is that you can open up the hood and exposes the engine right there. That looks nice. And then you got this tow winch right here. You see this knob. You can uh, roll it and it'll unravel this rope and this just looks so good so hook it on to whatever you want also the windshield folds over if you want to display it that way and you could just put it back in place another cool play feature the steering wheel is movable and the gear shift moves back and forth not included but you could put one of the blast effects on the machine guns and on the back here there are ports on the exhaust so uh, i tried putting those uh, smoke effects on here to see if it'll fit and uh kind of works but i don't know nah, it doesn't look right however you see this tow hitch right here yeah i think us joe fans know what this means so it looks like we're gonna get the heavy artillery laser with grand slam and that would be absolutely epic since we're getting the techno viper with sms i just feel like uh it's pretty much paving the way for that release but definitely grand slam is one i'm oh man i'm so wanting in this line to me they gotta release them with that laser and i'll be all over that did to get grand slam seated on grand slam i mean clutch see <laughs> i already want grand slam uh just to get clutch seated on here you know just fold out his uh legs uh, and then just get them on here it's pretty easy to slide in and you're just gonna have to get his hands gripped onto the steering wheel i do wish he had the regular c grip hands so that it looks like he's 
you know, steering the wheel naturally. I think with all the accessories that were included in this vamp, and they gave us a lot here. They could have thrown us alternate hands. My one gripe in this line is include hands. Now, I'm, I'm slowly seeing them trickle out hands with the figures, but I feel when it comes to a big offering like this, you know, give them the fists, give them the the regular gripping hands. Um, I just feel like that's super important. <laughs> Man, I could roll this all day. And the vamp is pretty wide, so if I stand the figure right there, as you can see, yeah, it's a little bit taller than a six-inch figure. I love how you can see Grunt in the reflection of the mirror. The only downside about these mirrors, it does feel a little bit flimsy, like I feel like this can break easily it does not pivot or anything and it doesn't come off of this little groove right here it's kind of just all sculpted in but yeah i recommend being careful with this when you're handling the vehicle for sure gotta kick off comparisons in a big way with the vehicles and here is the cobra his tank next to the vamp Apologies for this image being out of containment since my review station isn't wide enough, but I just wanted you to get the ideal for scaling. Here is the vamp next to the ram cycle, making it the biggest G.I. Joe vehicle we have at the moment. For some figure comparisons, here he is next to his best friend Rock and Roll. In many of his missions, he fights alongside Rock and Roll. Even when the two are no longer on the active Joe roster, they still are seen together sharing a love of muscle cars and hanging out at the beach checking out the ladies. Lastly, here he is next to some of the OG Joes from the initial 1982 launch of the line. Rock and Roll, Stalker, Grunt, Hawk, Breaker, and Snake Eyes. Scarlet is not pictured here because I sold her already as I want the new retro release. But we just need Hasbro to make Flash, Zap, Grand Slam, Short Fuse, and Steeler to complete this OG launch lineup. And now to wrap things up, my final rating is a 9.75 out of 10. I could have squeezed my rating to a perfect 10, but there are some things that prevented me from doing that. Such as not having alt hands for clutch is something I feel that should have been included for the $100 price point. The biggest issue for me was the ammo ribbon pulling the ammo cache out of place. And that does affect part of the presentation. But with those negatives out of the way, the rest is all positive. The clutch figure is great and the layered vest fits tight which doesn't hinder any movement at all so it feels like it's not even there when posing it. He's got spectacular paint apps, I love how they give tattoos to fit the personalities of the Joe characters. Someone behind the scenes understands these characters and their traits. Some fine accessories added and also army building potential makes for a fun figure. The Vant vehicle is display and play for me all day, every day. Bars. This thing is pure heat. They didn't miss a spot on the details. The level of details all over the place here are pushed to the max, like the decals, reflective mirrors, and everything else sculpted on here. Again, the painted details are spot on, so no sticker decals, thank god. A great array of accessories, then they added play features that reminded me of what made the His Tank so great. Rolling rubberized tires, tow winch, opening the hood, even adding some functions for easy handling like folding over the windshield to help adjust Clutch's hands, gripping the steering wheel or gear shift. They really were thoughtful in almost every aspect of play. Now that we can get these kind of smaller class vehicles in the line at a consumer friendly price that's not a HasLab, this will pave the way for the Cobra Stinger which is the most obvious since they share the same mold basically, but others in the likes of maybe a Skyhawk, Triple T possibly, a Cobra Fang, and the AWE Striker are ones on my mind. We already got the Cobra Ferret falling under this class on the way so I'm excited for that. This vehicle is a ton of fun with a lot of replay and display value. Once we get that heavy artillery laser with Grand Slam, then it's just going to enhance that replay and display value all over again, but on another level. I highly recommend it. This is something both Joe fans and even non-Joe fans will enjoy and appreciate. I still think it's worth the $100 price point and it's an exclusive you don't want to miss out on, especially if you are deep in the Joe line. This is a top 10 of 2024 hands down. Now I can get back to you. What do you think of this clutch and vamp vehicle pack? Are you army building or just getting one? Which smaller class vehicle would you like to see next in the line? Comment below, let me know, we'll chat about it. Thank you for watching another G.I. Joe Classified Series review. Please follow me on Instagram at xman87 if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell so you always know when my latest videos are up. Share and subscribe if you're new. See you on the next review. Peace, peace.